with the source release, I feel that my noise deck is now at its peak, its golden age. That's right, I think that once Order and Chaos comes out, my noise deck will actually uh, deprove in the meta game simply because everyone else will be playing Cyber Decks for your suite. So I think my noise deck will lose power once uh, Order and Chaos comes out. So I'm basically going to enjoy my time while this noise deck is still incredibly powerful. It's my test run deck and it uses two new cards from the source which are uh, Earthrise Hotel and Incubator. Now, Earthrise Hotel is the much needed card draw engine that I've been long awaiting for. With that, I can chuck away all my wild sites and I can um, have four clicks per turn for every single turn from now on. Of course, um, I used to only run two copies of wild site, but because Earthrise Hotel only draws me a limited number of cards, a finite number of cards for that matter, um, definitely I need to put three copies of Earthrise Hotel in. The second card is Incubator, which synergizes with any deck that runs uh, viruses that can that benefit greatly from being uh, loaded up at once. So Medium is the biggest candidate, obviously. Other viable co candidates include a Parasite, existing Parasite. You can instantly destroy an ice of your choice. Or, yeah, the other viruses are just not that good. Imp is not very good, you can still only use it once per turn, the corp will just purge your counters, virus counters thereafter. Crypsis, same deal, unless you are planning to break in a 5 uh, ice tower server with Crypsis only, in which case you are probably losing the game. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's look at my opening and mulligan hands. My opening hand looks very good, it has all the low cost viruses, it has money, it has ice destruction, it has operation destruction. but I can't keep that hand for a very simple reason. There's not much support past the first few virus installs. There's no Grimoire to back them up. There's no card draw. There's no other source of money like these source pawn shops. So I'm forced to mulligan and I do get a better hand. This has all the money and Grimoire. So this is fantastic for me. So he installs double eyes and hedge funds up. Uh, meanwhile, I run straight into his Aaron Boy, which is a very annoying piece of ice to face check, makes Waylon face checking so much harder, and I trash his world of this. So now I actually get an idea of what kind of Waylon deck he's running. He's running building a better world. Interesting. You, uh, most people now prefer Blue Sun, but this guy seems to like the operation uh, transaction economy. So that's that. In the meantime, I think he's trying to sneak out an Atlas, or at least I want to face check his upgrade. So or asset or agenda, so I run straight into his Enigma. Following that, I saw my Aesops and Grimoire ready to power my imp, uh, cash the next turn. So he reveals that the asset that he installed was a daily business show. I would love to contest that, but Enigma is actually one of the hardest pieces of ice for me to contest. Um, I do have a Parasite in my hand, and I'm definitely looking to use it, but I think it's better served on HQ than destroying his remote ice. Um, I'd rather save the Parasite as a surprise in case he decides to use the daily business show server as his scoring server. Then I'll actually know what kind of ice I'm facing up against. So I do destroy the Iron Boy. Thanks to Grimoire, it is destroyed instantly. Unfortunately for me, the Iron Boy was basically only a one credit tax for the corp because he chose to take three credits with the Iron Boy when I face checked it. Alright, so I run a couple of times, I see the power shutdown. Uh, note to self, do not install Shahrazad. So this is a very heavy program trashing deck, you can expect him to run World of Wiz. Uh, power shutdown, you have to expect that there are Grims and Archers in there as well. So, um, I start with an inject and that reveals two more injects. Chaining injects is really awesome. Uh, and at this point, I'm just looking for my Deja Vu's and my uh, money. Daily cast would be really nice to have right about now. Unfortunately, I cannot really contest his agenda, what seems to be a overscored Atlas. I do have a test run, but I only have two clicks left. I, that's not enough time to use test run to get to the server, so I ditched it. Instead, I ran R&D, and it's another Aaron Boy. So, well, so be it. He gets three credits, I believe, for that. And no, he gets one card and two credits, and then I access a card. And with my last click, I 
pull the parasite back, which is basically I want to threaten him. I say, hey, you better not score your agenda. You better um, eyes up R and D because if you do, if you do score that overscore at least, I'm just going to parasite that Aaron Boy down and get three medium runs all day. You do not want that to happen. So, sure enough, he did the right thing here. He iced up both HQ and R and D. So this gives gives me one whole turn to contest the server. I run. I see an ice wall. Time to contest it. I have a test run. I can test run my Corroda out. Do I do that? Do I do I use my test run? Yes, I do. Okay, I search my stack for the Corroda. It turns out it's right at the top of my stack. Well, whatever. I'll break the ice wall, and I'll access that agenda, which turns out to be a Grindel refinery. Well, at least I have enough credits to trash it. So. He won't go too out of hand with his credits at least. And with my last click, I will draw a card. Now, at that point, I could install the cache. I didn't want to because I wanted to take full use of the recurring cyber feeder credits. Now, this is something rather important when playing my noise deck because it can only generate a finite amount of money. Once I run out of caches, deja boosts, and daily casts, my only economic option is clicking for credits. So. Um, making full use of cyber feeder credits is an is actually a very important skill to playing well. You must know when um, you are able. You must milk your cyber feeders to the fullest effect while still maintaining uh, pressure on the core. So you cannot hold back virus installs just because you want to uh, use cyber feeder credits every single time you install a virus. You must strike a good balance between offense and uh, solidifying your economy. So I eventually face check archives because I knew I virus milk quite a bit of stuff and I found three points of agendas. Then he ices up archives, which he should have done much earlier. Well, never too late. Against noise, it's re it really is never too late. Alright, so the game continues. I do install my Corroder that was test ran earlier. In the meantime, he scores a hostile takeover. Now, this is actually quite a worrying card. The bad pub really helps me, but... I know he runs archers, so that is something I'm not looking forward to face. It means that I can no longer run safely because my only corroder is on the board. Uh, I definitely don't want to lose my only corroder to an archer. I'm not so worried about power shutdown because cyber feeders are there to uh, tank the power shutdowns for me. It's the archers that are the worst. So I'm definitely digging my deck pretty hard for the one day copy of David. I certainly need it here. The other option is um, overloading a uh, data sucker with at least 3 sucker tokens, then I can go in with a mimic, breaking archer for 4, which is pretty sweet. In the meantime, he gets a pet campaign going. I definitely wish to deny his credits, because it seems like he's not running too much in the way of transaction economy. He's not by any means rich just yet, so I, I mean, I'm actually within I'm actually staying safe out of C's double scotch range, which is pretty incredible. I don't usually get to say that against Wayland. But I'm actually keeping my uh credit pool at a decently high level thanks to all the early caches. There's so many caches here. Um so I do trash his pet campaign. Don't want his credits to go out of hand. And then I take a credit. So now we are equal on credits, and I'll get 3 more credits at the start of my next turn because I have a cash ready to pawn. So, yeah. So basically, I'm trying to maintain the tempo of installing 1 virus per turn. That goes well with my cyber feeder. Alright, he advances a card in the remote server, so my plans change. First, I try to draw up to see if I can find a David. That didn't happen. So I think about it for a while here. How can I best break through his server? I have a Corroder, which will get through the Ice Wall. I risked it. I installed the Crypsis and I ran. Guess what? Well played. That card right there. Swordsman. The one card I was worried about. I'm not sure if I, I think I saw the Swordsman earlier from running HQ. And yeah. Um, to put... to. Add insult to injury, it wasn't an agenda, it was an aggressive secretary that took my Corroda away. So in one turn, I lost basically 7 credits. My Corroda and my Crypsis all gone to waste. The only good news from that is that now I can face check his central safety. 
because an archer would do minimal damage. Nope, no agendas in there, just a power shutdown. That was a very painful turn for me and that completely changed the dynamic of the game. Here he was able to safely install an advance a card knowing that I have no Crypsis or Corroda for the matter to deal with his Icefall. Now I could Parasite down his Icefall and run through his server. Swordsman is a porous piece of ice after all and that's exactly what I do. So his entire server is pretty much chewed through and I scored a very very vital Atlas. So for those of you who think that Noise is not able to get through servers at a moment's notice, well, I'm demonstrating you the exact opposite. That um, I was able to contest his remote server twice in a row, even though he caught me out with a double program trash. That was pretty huge. And Anux are awesome because they have Deja Vu and for recursion. And in my case, there's Test Run as well. There's still one more Test Run in my deck, if I'm not wrong. So I'm definitely going to look for to using that to retrieve my Corroder from the heat. In the meantime, Solidified, um, I'm sure my stealing of Atlas has definitely slowed him down as the corp, because now he knows that I can get through any server at will. So he's definitely more reluctant to toss agendas into double ice remotes just like that. Right now you see he's forced to put another piece of ice on that remote. Frankly, I think he should have just deleted his Swordsman, because with a Mimic on the table, Swordsman is rather moot. So, he passes his turn over to me, and I take advantage of this um, downtime where he's too afraid to score agendas. I don't have to be worried about uh, his tempo. As long as I challenge his remote server every time he attempts to advance a kind there, I will win the game. So now I'm just looking to solidify my economy. I'm definitely getting my Crypsis back because both of my Crypsis are in the heap already. The second virus was what I was thinking about. In the end, I decided to go with cash because I knew the only form of economy left in my deck were the couple of daily casts left. And daily casts takes quite a long time to pay out. So I need to make sure I have enough credits to challenge his remote server should he immediately install something there. So that's what I did. The cash will grant me enough credits to challenge his remote. Next turn, I'm definitely looking to install my cyber feeder. And that will allow me to install my Crypsis, my Imp, and my Medium for much cheaper. In the meantime, um, I actually have an incubator uh, being worked on right now, and it's actually doing pretty good. It has two virus tokens on it right now. I'll have three virus tokens, not gonna use it just yet. You see, incubator is so dangerous, you have to purge virus counters once it gets to four or more. I mean, even three is a lot. If you uh, consider that those virus tokens can go on a medium, his RD is not too well protected as it is. So I get the Crypsis online. Because I have three cyber feeders, might as well make full use of the credits there. And I still have seven credits with me, so that's pretty good. In the meantime, he plays subliminal messaging. Well, I can't stop that economy from happening. Subliminal messaging is actually not that good in building a better world. I would much rather run other transactions to make the fullest use of Wayland's ID. Alright, so he double advances a card. That changes my plans. Uh, well, actually no, it doesn't. I can't really contest that server right now. I don't have enough credits. I have a silver bullet called David in my hand, but I don't think it's worth it against him because that could be a trap. So I allow him to score it and he showed us. It's a Hades fragment. Oh dear. Against noise, that is perfect. Well, nothing much I can do about that. I guess I cannot really deck him, nor can I contest archives too heavily. I don't know what the archives ice is. Instead, I'm going for my mega turn. Install medium and David, unload medium, unload incubator medium, and make a Hail Mary run on R&D. If I can get through his server, I will essentially win the game. I see 7 cards, all I need is 1 agenda. I know there's an archer on that server, hence the David install to get past the archer once. The only problem I was worried about was an archer followed by a toll booth, or vice versa. I would not have enough credits to deal with a toll booth. Yep, I only have 6 credits, 3 credits will be spent on tax, and I can lower toll booth strength by 2, I'll be 1 credit short. 
Oh, I have bad pub, I guess. But yeah, otherwise he did not uh, res any ice because he knew that I could get through with my Crypsis and my David and my Mimic. So I won the game basically. But only barely. Of the seven cards I found, only one Atlas was there. If it was a hostile takeover, the game would continue and things would be very different. And that's because he managed to bury lots and lots of agendas with daily business show throughout the game. There was one time when he shuffled everything back with Jackson Howard, but for the most part, he was burying agendas, and that really reduced the agenda density on top of R&D for the rest uh, when I went to go medium digging. I think this is a game I definitely want to show because um, this illustrates the sheer power of a loaded incubator and why it's such a powerful card. You really cannot afford as the corp to leave an uh, incubator with even three virus counters on it because it can lose you the game just like that in one in the span of a single turn. That is scary stuff. Incubator basically trivializes the difficulty of loading up a medium. Previously, you had to work very hard for every single medium token by running through and dealing with all of the corpse R&D eyes one at a time. And after about three or four runs, the corp purges you and you're back down to no medium counters. With Incubator, you just install it and sit there. A few turns later, it's ready for the picking. No effort required. Had he purged virus counters before scoring the Hades Fragment, the game probably would have been different. But at the end of the day, I can't really fault him because he did quite a good job against Noise. Um, he has Tech in his deck, which is Swordsman, against Noise, which is very reliant on Cripsis. There's Aggressive Secretary to catch you off guard. Power Shutdown really negates the Shahrazad economic engine quite very well. 